Welcome to ATF Hydrographics and another edition of our video series that we call Just the Tip, where we give you guys at home great tips and tricks on how you can become a better DIY hydro dipper. In today's video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about flame treating plastic. We're going to explain the process, show it to you, answer all the questions that we get on a regular basis, and we're going to play with fire. Stick around, show you how we do it. Today's video is brought to you in part by One Hit Wonder Paint Company. If you're looking for some hydrographic supplies or really good hydrographic paint that we use here in our shop all the time, look no further than these guys right here. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I may or may not have a coupon code that I will give you and you can save yourself a little bit of money when you shop there. So first up, let's cover why you need to know about flame treating and what it is. There are a lot of things made out of plastic these days and not all plastics are created equal. Some plastics are very easy to get paint to stick to and some are not so easy to get paint to stick to. And in order to hydro dip stuff, you need to paint it first. And if you're going to be painting a plastic part, like one of these, you've got to make sure that it doesn't need to be flame treated before you paint it. So if you happen to paint a part that needs to be flame treated and you don't flame treat it first, what can happen is later on down the road, the paint will start bubbling, flaking off. It'll probably make everybody have itchy, watery eyes, probably make you cry yourself to sleep and listen to REM in your closet, and probably contribute to more global warming, which we don't need any more of that. So we got to check them and see which ones need to be flame treated and which ones do not. So how do we tell if something needs to be flame treated? Well, first, let's get some plastic. The next thing you're going to need is a very small razor blade, sharper the better, and then a cup of water, preferably a clear glass. And this is not any kind of fancy special water. This is not holy water. This is not unicorn tears. This is just water out of the tap. Nothing special. And you don't have to add anything to it. Just water. So what we're going to do on this first piece of plastic is we're going to come in here where nobody can see and we're just going to take a small sliver of plastic out. As you can see that is a teeny tiny little piece of plastic. That is all that we need. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our little bitty piece of plastic and we're going to stick it in the water. Now you will see when we put this piece of plastic in, it doesn't matter what kind of plastic it is, it is going to sit on top of the water. It is going to float. So what you're going to need to do is stick it down in the water, swirl it around a little bit, give it a second, and see what it does. So as you can see, our piece of plastic is now floating to the bottom of the glass. So this first one sunk down to the bottom. Let's try another one. I'm going to do the same thing in here on the inside. Grab me a small little sliver. Got me a little piece right there. And into the water we go. And as you can see, that piece of plastic is right there and it is floating. It's not all the way at the top. It's about an inch down or so, but it is floating. So that was our first one. It sank to the bottom. This was our second one. It floated, so it's going to go over here. Now let's try this one. And down into the water it goes. And as you can see, that piece sank straight to the bottom right there. So this one goes over in the sink pile. We've got one that floated, two that sank. So what does floating and sinking plastic in water have to do with flame treating? Well, everything. That's why I showed it to you. This little water test is how you are going to determine whether or not something needs to be flame treated or not. If your plastic floats at the top or anywhere near the top, so about midway up to the top, and it is floating in the water, then it needs to be flame treated. Float means flame treat. If it sinks to the bottom or it stays pretty close to the bottom, then it is safe to just scuff and go ahead and paint. Again, very simple to remember. If it floats, flame treat. If it sinks, scuff and paint. It kind of gets a rhythm after a while. Float, flame treat, sink, scuff and paint, and yeah, you, you get it. It's catchy. You'll get it after a while, I promise. Now, before you go freaking out about what happens if it started floating and then it sank later, or I let it sit for 10 minutes and it was sunk and then it floated to the top, don't worry about it. Just calm down. The great thing about flame treating is if it doesn't need to be flame treated and you flame treat it anyways, it's not going to hurt anything. You can literally flame treat every piece of plastic if you want to. I'm trying to teach you a way to avoid having to do that and wasting your time and energy if you don't really need to. But the key thing to remember is you can't screw it up. If it doesn't need to be flame treated and you do it anyways, 
it won't hurt anything. So now that we've figured out how to tell what needs to be flame treated and what does not, let's go through the process of flame treating. First thing you're going to need is some gloves. You do not want whatever is on your nasty booger hooks all over your nice clean part that you're about to clean. The next thing you're going to need is a squirt bottle with some type of degreasing and wax remover. This one particular that I like to use is naphtha. You can also use stuff like Prepsol that you can buy at Napa Auto Parts, Advanced Auto Parts, places like that. And then you're going to need some clean lint-free paper towels. Now the very first thing you're going to want to do is clean and degrease your part very, very well. Once it is clean, you can go ahead and scuff or sandblast or whatever you're going to do in order to get this ready to be painted. Because right after you get done with that, you're going to go ahead and flame treat it and then clean it one more time and it'll be ready for paint. But that is the order of operations that you're always going to want to do anytime you're flame treating. You want to clean it, degrease it first, go ahead and scuff it or sandblast it, whichever you're going to do, and then flame treat it and then it'll be ready for paint. So for conversation's sake, let's just pretend that I sandblasted this. And the next thing you're going to do is get rid of all of this flammable stuff because we are about to bust out some flames. And this does not need to be anywhere near where we are going to be playing with fire. And it's probably not a bad idea to have one of these very close by as well. You know, because safety third. Now to do your actual flame treating, you are going to need a propane type tank. You cannot use a heat gun or anything else. What you need is propane. You need a propane tank. You can get these little automatic starters that they sell at like Lowe's or Home Depot. I like this one because it's a click button and then you turn it off and you don't have to worry about accidentally hitting it anymore. Now up here on the end, this is called a flame spreader. I will leave a link down in the description box below to where you can get you one of these from Amazon. They also sell them at places like Ace Hardware and a few other places. But basically what this does is it takes the flame and helps spread it over a greater area than just having that one little single flame coming out the middle. So as you can see with the lights off, the flame actually comes out quite a ways, but then over here on the end, it makes kind of like this little ripply pattern. What you want is to get this part of the flame right here to actually touch the part. You don't want out here touching the part. You need the actual flame itself to touch the part. So the best thing to do is just kind of take you a, kind of a guesstimate measure of how far the flame is. So about right here is where your nice even pattern on the flame is and measure that distance and that's how far away you're going to need to be from your part when you're actually doing your flame treating. Now the flame treating itself is very simple. It looks like this. It's very quick. The only thing that needs to happen is the flame needs to touch the plastic for one second for every piece of this plastic. So as you can see, I'm moving this really fast. I'm not trying to hold this in one spot because you will melt the plastic. All you're trying to do is let the flame touch every part of the plastic. And then as soon as you're done, you've got your flame out of the way. You don't have to worry about catching nothing on fire. Take your degreaser, your denatured alcohol, whatever you want. Because the flame burns so hot, it will burn anything off the surface that was left over. You wanna go ahead and clean this one more time really well. blow it off with some compressed air, and this is ready to paint. Well, on this side, we still need to flame treat the other side. Now here is another angle so you can see just exactly how close I am getting when I'm doing this flame treating. And that is all there is to it. It is not difficult at all, folks. Just don't overthink it. All you need to do is make the flame, touch the part, and then blow it off really good and it's ready to paint. Don't get yourself too wrapped up in stuff that you've seen or heard on the internet previously about, you know, you gotta make the color change and it's gotta look wet and all this other crap. All you need to know is that the plastic needs a flame to touch it for one second, clean it, and it is ready to paint. I'm not a plastic scientist. I'm not a NASA space rocket surgeon. I'm not any of that stuff. I'm just a guy who does hydro dipping for a living. And this is what I do because this is how I have been trained in the past and I know that this works. And at the end of the day, that's all I care about is am I gonna give my customers a part that I know the paint is gonna stick to forever? And this is the way to make that happen. I know that because it works. Just don't overcomplicate it and don't overthink it. It's really not that big of a deal. Make the flame, touch the plastic for one second, 
and you're good to go. Video lessons like the one we just did are a very small portion of what we do in our very big online training course that we provide on Patreon. So if you want to learn more about hydro dipping, get more in-depth information and informative tutorial videos, or you're thinking about getting into the hydro dipping business, then you definitely need to check out our online training over on Patreon. I've got a link down in the description box below. We've got multiple tiers to fit your budget, and we have classes that start from beginner all the way to elite business people that want to get into doing this full-time for a living. And big thank you to our channel sponsors like Freedom Loop and One Hit Wonder for helping us put out videos like the one we did today. If you would like to check them out and the coupon codes that we have for them, they are down in the description box below. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's roll the bloopers. You definitely need to check out our, tri our training, training, check out our training. We got some good stuff over here. Just don't overthunk it and make it, did I just say overthunk? Oh my God, now I'm overthunking. I'm overthinking. Oh my God, it's, so, it's way too late to be doing this. A portion of the amount of <laughs> graphics in today's, God, we gotta do the just a tip part, not in today. We got it all mixed up. Welcome to All Things Fun Hydrographics into again, really? We just. Ugh. If you can get the freaking gloves on. Mine, is, is, this is not working out well. Welcome to All Things Fun. Or about the high. About the high. They're at, they are down in the description. Totally meant to do that the fourth time. Not that one. I didn't mean to do that one.